Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're gonna talk about replication IDs. What is a replication ID and when would you ever use one? This one comes up a lot for my students to take my Access Beginner 3 class because I cover field sizes. And if you look at an auto number, it's got two field sizes. It's got long integer, which is the default, and another one called replication ID. And I always tell people, don't worry about it. We'll talk about it in a future class. And I, I go over it a little bit, but I don't really talk about it in depth in my course. Because quite honestly, it's something that most people will never use. I think in my 30 years of working with, well, near 30 years of working with Access, I've used it maybe twice. Generally, you use this to set up a replicated database. Now, Access used to have a feature where you could replicate a database, and it was designed for remote workers in a day before everyone had internet access everywhere and you could pull up stuff on your phone. Well, if you had a worker, you could replicate the database and they could take a copy of it on their laptop. You know, and they can work on the plane or at the clients, whatever. They could add contacts, they could add orders in, bring it back to the office, and then you'd sync those two databases together. Now, I actually do have a tech help video that I put together a few years ago that shows you how to do this, how to sync a remote database. But let me just give you the basics of how this works right now. Needless to say, Microsoft removed replicas from Access a few versions back. But let's say you got a database. I'm going to call it DB1. Let's open it up. All right, here's my basic database. I got a customer form. Here's all my customers. Every customer has contacts and orders. Okay, great. Now, the way the database is right now, if I want to copy this, right, or we'll copy this one here, we'll call it DB2. All right, now I'm going to take this on my laptop and go on a plane ride somewhere, and I'm going to do some work on this. Now, if I open this up, DB1, this is the copy back in the office. All right, Richard Ross, go to contacts, all right, some stuff. All right, now I'm just going to minimize this. If I open up DB2, I'm on my laptop. All right, and I also come into Richard Rost and add some other stuff. Okay, guess what happens? If you go into contact T, all right, that other stuff was assigned contact ID 5, or 15, 5, yeah, 15, right? So close that. Now look in the other database, this is the original one. That one also has contact ID 15. And that's a problem, right? If we bring them back to the office, well, guess what? They're going to cause a conflict. You can't merge them back together. So this is where the replication ID comes into play. So let me delete database two and let's go back into database one. Now we're going to set this up so you can do replication. Now I'm just going to do it on one table. We're just going to do it on the contact table. Design view, go to that auto number, change the field size to replication ID. It says once you do this, you're not, you, there's no going back. Are you sure? Back up your stuff first, people. All right, here's my warning slide. Back up your data before doing this. Make copies. You should be doing nightly backups. If not, go watch this video here. All right, so are you sure you want to do this, y'all? Okay, save it, close it. Now let's open up that contact table again. Look what we got in here. It's a weird looking number. All right, what is that? Well, it's, it's, it's a replication ID. And if, you, and if you add new records down here, look at that. They look like that. They're really weird looking. That's a 120-bit number it's yeah it's a number it's in hexadecimal uh it's called a guid a globally unique identifier okay or a uuid universally unique identifier whatever you want to call it and it's basically it assumes that no two of these in your database will ever duplicate ever and you can copy it and you can bring them back together again okay so let me delete these now all of your existing ids the contact ids will get basically you know a simple number like that but Save changes, yes. Okay, if I go into my account now, go to contacts, okay, um, new contact one, okay, close it, take a look at what you got in here, all right, you got a number like that, starts with 965, okay, that's new contact one. Now, I'm going on vacation, so I'm going to copy this over here like I just did a minute ago, copy here, and we're gonna come in here and change this to DB2 again. Okay, now DB2, I open up DB2, and while I'm on vacation, I come in here and I put in some new contacts. Okay, vacation, contact one, vacation, contact two, whatever. All right, and those are getting unique identifiers like that. Okay, there's vacation, contact one, vacation, contact two, 
And meanwhile, back at the office while I'm on vacation, okay, those don't show up there, obviously. But if people come in here and add contacts, right, office, contact one, office, contact two, all right, those are getting their own unique identifiers, too. And the chances of those duplicating are nil. Well, not nil. It's, it's not... It's not zero, but it's close to zero. We'll talk about that at the end of class, what the, what the odds are. Okay, but now, bottom line is, here's the office database, right? I come back from vacation, okay? And all you really have to do is now merge any records in here that don't match in here. You can do that with an, up, with an import and an update query, and I show how to do that in my sync remote database. All right, you just bring the records from this database where this ID doesn't match into here. And since it's a primary key, you could just copy and paste. But again, I'll show you how to do that properly in this video. Go watch this if you want to learn how to do this. Of course, with, with today's world, generally, most people have internet access everywhere. So this isn't something that happens a lot. And that's probably why Microsoft depreciated this feature. You could still do it yourself with a little bit of code. I get it if you're like on an airplane or something and you have no Wi-Fi, even though most airplanes nowadays have Wi-Fi. But still, you can, you can connect to the Office database. And you don't need to do a replicated. But I, I, I have heard from people, uh, students of mine, who do like, you know, they do work out in like the, you know, the jungles of the Amazon and they have zero internet out there. Um, you know, and, and satellite internet isn't an option because of budget or whatever. And so this is handy if you're on a budget and you have no internet. Now, if you've been following my videos for any time, you know that I've got a, a fascination with this new AI stuff out, including chat GPT. So I decided to ask chat GPT, I said... What are the odds of two GUIDs being duplicated? And it gave me some stuff here about generating two identical GUIDs is intentionally made as close to zero as possible. And then it said it's, it's, it's so low that it's generally considered negligible. Okay, okay, all right. But then I pressed it. I said, right, but mathematically, what are the odds? And it actually gave me the way to calculate it. <laughs> and it said, if you generated one billion GUIDs, okay, the probability of two of them being identical would be one in 6.7 times 10 to the 17th power. So that's a six with 17 zeros after it. So as you can see, it's not zero, but it's pretty close. So I would say for your access database, if you are doing replication, well, the GUIDs are safe. You're not gonna get duplicates. But there you go. And I like to make little videos for this, not only for you guys on YouTube and stuff, but for my students. When I, when I mention something in class, I, I, I say it a lot and people yell at me a lot. They, I, I say, we're going to talk about this more in a future class. Now, some things that are more difficult, like if, I'm, if I mention, you know, uh, combo boxes or something, and I say to the beginners, we're going to discuss combo boxes in Access Expert 2. Okay. But something like this, which is a feature that almost no one uses, I'm not going to waste time in my full course covering this. So that's what the tip videos are for. So there you go. There's your fast tip video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, 
access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full length courses found on my website, not just for access to. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all, $1. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.